What's up, guys? Sam here. It's real dark. Let's turn on some lights. It's like real dark, but th is this not the coolest thing when the, the MacBook reflects the, the wallpaper? I always love that. All right, close your eyes. It's gonna get bright. All right, we're back. Hey, what's up, guys? Sam here. Welcome back to another video. Hope all of you are doing great. We have a great show coming up today. I'm super excited to be talking about iPhone 13, iPhone Fold, and even a ton of Mac roadmap news. So like, when should you buy the Mac mini or the Mac Pro or the MacBook Pro? It's all here in today's video. So here we go. So what are you waiting for? If you're excited for today's video, drop a like down below. It seriously helps me and the channel out. And click that subscribe button and turn on the bell for notifications so that you never miss a beat. Now you guys know this is always one of my favorite things to do. We get to watch the wheel. We get to see what topic we're gonna be looking at first. Is it Mac? Is it iPhone? Today, we're looking at the iMac Pro delay. So you guys know that the 24 inch that's behind me, well, there's been some speculation that with this coming out and Apple still selling the 27 inch iMac, that maybe the, the larger screen Apple Silicon Mac would, would take a little bit longer than the small one. And that's actually what Mark Gurman has said, that Apple wanted to get the 24 inch out of the door so badly that they took some engineers and work from the big iMac to the smaller iMac to make it happen earlier, but I think that means that the bigger iMac is coming later. We've now heard this from a source. Dylan DKT, who's quickly becoming one of my favorite leakers, he's around 81% accurate, put out a tweet that explained Apple's silicon strategy for this fall. First of all, he reaffirms that M1X is indeed happening this fall, so there should be no worry whatsoever about the MacBook Pros and, as we'll talk about in a little bit, potentially some new Mac minis. Yet with that informed us that Apple will not be releasing the iMac Pro upgrade or the larger 27 inch plus iMac with Apple Silicon, like the high end version, the big daddy, the big kahuna, until sometime in 2022. So that's next year if you're counting. And let's just take a second to be sad because some of us wanted that iMac this year. But here's why Apple's not doing it. Apple wants the focus on this fall to be the M1X, meaning the new MacBook Pros and likely the new Mac Minis. There is probably gonna be an M2 or an M2X in this new iMac, so it wouldn't make sense for Apple to be like, here's M1X and here's something twice as good already. We've got it. It would invalidate M1X on day of release. It doesn't seem like a super smart move, even though I, I would still be down. So if you've been looking at the 27 inch iMac and you're like, maybe I should hold off, it's still gonna be a while. So it, it really, I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's not the craziest idea to buy an Intel 27 inch iMac or a refurbished iMac Pro, something like that, just because I think we're roughly a year away from this new bigger iMac Pro update. <laughs> You might be wondering why I'm in the shower. Well, it's because it's summertime. It's hot as hell outside, and WeVPN just started their summer sale. You guys know the VPNs help you stay safer and more anonymous online, and there's a reason I use WeVPN instead of everybody else. The guys over at WeVPN are a group of industry veterans that left all the other VPN companies doing sketchy stuff with your data in order to make a product that not only gets better every week, but that also cares about you. On top of that, WeVPN allows you to unblock content on now more than 350 streaming services around the world, meaning you can watch shows that aren't usually available in your area. I've used this and it's so cool. And right now there's a crazy deal happening. The summer sale is live, which means that for a limited time, you can get 74% off and three months of free service when you purchase a two year plan. That's just $2.59 a month. And on top of that, when you use code IUPDATE, you get an additional 10% off. Listen, there's a reason that I continue to work with WeVPN each and every single week. And it's because I use it and I believe in it. If you guys like what I do here on YouTube, then head over to wevpn.com slash IUPDATE Update and get started today. So obviously most of the time on this channel, we're talking about leaks and rumors from credible sources to give you guys an inside look at future Apple products. But something that Apple did about a year and a half ago that they almost never do is actually give us a timeline for when new products are coming. It was at WWDC 2020, the first digital event that Apple ever held, you know, back in the early days of Rona. But aside from this being the first digital event, which was kind of a big deal in and of itself, this was the event where Apple told us about their Apple Silicon plans, that they were ditching Intel, that they were going all in on their own design and engineering to create something now, which is the M1 and things like the M1X coming in the future. And generally when Apple just announces things, they'll either give an exact date or say coming soon. But Apple specifically said, we estimate this to take about two years. So from that date of June 2020, that would be June of 2022. But if you've looked at the past year and a half since WWDC 2020, 
we haven't gotten a half of Apple's Silicon Mac updates yet. Up until this point, we've just gotten a base MacBook Air and Pro, a base Mac Mini, and the base iMac refresh. But the high-end iMac, the Mac Pro, the 14-inch MacBook Pro, the 16-inch MacBook Air, the high-end Mac Mini, those have not been out yet. So it's like, is Apple behind? When are these things coming? Are they still on schedule? Or is this really gonna be two years? Well, German says, yeah, but you have to start counting from November of 2020, not all the way in June. Suggesting that we won't get things like the higher end iMac or even the major Mac Pro Apple Silicon refreshes until late in 2022, potentially as late as November, and we're talking about dates, let's put it on a map. Let's actually make a roadmap for Apple Silicon, and I'll show you when I believe, based off of credible information and reputable sources, when all these updates are happening. First up, new MacBook Pros, both 14 and 16 inch, are coming this fall. I think it's gonna be October. It could also be November. I don't think it's gonna be September. I'm gonna say October, November for the new M1X MacBook Pro 14 and 16 inch. We're also hearing that right after that, Apple's gonna be updating the high-end Mac Mini with M1X, so then we will be getting the M1X Mac Mini. But for 2021, for the rest of this year, I believe that's all we're getting. I don't think MacBook Air, high-end other stuff is coming in 2021. I think the rest of this year, we already got a new iMac, I think it's gonna be Mac Mini and MacBook Pro, both featuring the exact same M1X chips. Now let's fast forward a few months to early 2022. This is gonna be when we likely see the new MacBook Air. It's gonna be redesigned from the ground up and look totally fresh. We have renders and yes, it's going to come in colors according to John Prosser. I remember a few months ago when, when the iMac colors were supposed to happen and everybody said, no, no, there's no way Apple's gonna do that. Well, John was right and that's my boy. I so I think they're coming to the MacBook Air too. For early 2022 in the spring, that's all I think we're gonna see is a MacBook Air. But go forward to WWDC, maybe we get an announcement or a preview of something, but I don't believe that further future Apple Silicon will launch until fall of 2022. So between September and November of 2022 is when we're gonna get the following. A larger redesigned 30 to 32 inch iMac Pro with an M2X or potentially something like an, an M3X or something, but my bets are on M2X at this point, and then also the Apple Silicon Mac Pro with something even more powerful than M2X. And that's the end of the transition. November of 2022, every single Mac that Apple sells will have a low and high-end version with their own silicon, and I bet for the engineering teams that is just gonna be the greatest feeling. And now as we get to the apex of this video, I would say that it's time to talk about the iPhone. It's a new segment, it's called the iPhone segment. No, it's not new, I just wanted to rebrand it and do something fun. All right, so two things today, we've got iPhone 13 and iPhone full. The iPhone 13 tidbit is so small and I'm pretty sure it's wrong, but it's one of those tidbits that also seems kind of realistic. This website that is peak sketch, as in they don't get much right at all whatsoever, called My Drivers, said that the iPhone 13 could support 25 watt charging. Now, if this was any other rumor, I don't think I'd report it because they are simply so inaccurate here. You, usually, they're, yeah. but considering that's what the Samsung Galaxy can fast charge at, and Apple has been incrementally making the fast charging a little bit better year over year, and hearing the lack of other major upgrades for the S year iPhone 13, I, I mean, yeah, I think it could be five watts faster. I could see Apple having a new power brick, but. I don't know why Apple wouldn't increase it. It seems like a pretty obvious thing to make better year over year. Everybody wants their phones to charge faster. Just don't tell your friends that you heard it here. All right, I heard it from a guy out back, which is my drivers, and this dude looks like he's been through it. So we're gonna put this at, at like a, a three out of 10 possibility. But something that we know Apple's working on for sure that I've talked about you know, a little bit, give me guys some tidbits on is, A product that I, I, I'm just, mm, I don't really want them to make it because I, I generally think they're giving, it's folding phones. Let me just say it, folding phones. Apple's working on an iPhone fold. And we've heard that it's gonna have a fabric hinge and that it'll have a crazy big screen and it'll fold and or clamshell and that Apple's working on prototypes. This is how it goes when you're making a new product in an entirely new category of smartphone. The reason I bring this up is that for a while, we were like, could it come this year? Could we get an iPhone fold this year right after Samsung's event in August where they're announcing the new Z Fold and, and Z Flip phones? Could we get it in early next year? No, it turns out, according to Mark Gurman. On Power On, 
he was like, yeah, Apple's working on this, I can absolutely confirm that, but I think this is still at a minimum two or three years away, which would put us at the earliest possible time frame for a foldable iPhone, September of 2023. Will anyone care? I kind of doubt it unless Apple can do something really different feature-wise or make a design that's more compelling. Because right now, I just don't care. And that's f f f facts All right, guys, thank you for watching this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like down below. Hit subscribe for more. I've been Sam. Hope you're doing well. I'll catch you cool cats in my next video. No, you guys are, you guys are top dogs. All right, I'll see you in my next video.